I was supposed to be teaching a lesson right now, but my student probably forgot about the lesson. So here I am alone. And uh, I thought I would just um, show you what I had planned for today's lesson. So <clears throat> I'm sorry for my husky voice, but it's been a couple of rough weeks for my throat. And uh, yeah, here we go. All right, can you all see the board? I hope so. <laughs> so today I was going to talk about pins with my student. You have to think that he's a nine-year-old, but he's like very, very smart. And um, we have already learned about double attacks, discovery attacks, pins, keywords, and so on and so forth. But today I was going to talk about pins again, in the sense that we have to prepare the pins sometimes. So this is a simple but good example of, um, you already have a piece here that is in a bit of a delicate position in the sense that it's already being attacked, although it is currently being defended by the rook. So what is the winning move here for white? It is rook c8, because now you pin the knight to the rook and you add more pressure to that knight. So there are two attackers now and only one defender. So regardless of what white, uh, sorry, what black plays here, the knight is gone, right? Um, another position is uh, you have, yeah, okay, this is, this is white to play. So you have an interesting position where you have rook versus bishop. And the whole idea here is that black's king is in a very bad position because since it's locked behind the pawns, you have the, the back rank thing here, right? The back rank checkmate thing. So the right move would be rook to f1. And uh, you're attacking the bishop, but not only. You're also preparing your rook to go to the back rank. So after this move, if they do move the bishop away, it doesn't really matter, doesn't really matter where to, there will be a checkmate on f8, right? So therefore, the bishop here is pinned not to a piece, but to a square, right? So this way you're gonna win uh, the bishop and <laughs> hopefully you're gonna win the game as well because I mean, with an extra rook, we should all know how to win this by now, right? Hopefully. <laughs> all right, so here you have a case where there is already a pin and you're like, okay, I have pinned the knight. And what now? Certainly you're not gonna capture it with the rook since the rook is worth more than the knight, right? But there are a couple of ways to exploit a pin. And one way would be to attack that piece, the piece that is being pinned a second time, right? So how do you do this? Well, you're going to play pawn to a4. And now you attack the knight. But since the, the knight is already pinned, that means that it cannot go anywhere. It's kind of like frozen. And now it's Black's turn. They have to make a move with the king. And after that, you're going to either capture with a rook or with a pawn. And you have won a knight. Um, OK, so where is the pin in this position? It's white's turn. Well, the knight, the Black Knight, is pinned to the rook, right? So if that knight moves, the rook on f7 is hanging, right? So this is a pin. How can white exploit the pin? Perfect, yes, you're gonna play g3. You're attacking the knight a second time. And now black cannot defend that knight. Again, if the knight goes away, then black will lose a rook, which is even worse. So here, the knight is gone. Um. Okay, where is the pin in this position? <laughs> Yes, the bishop is pinned to what though? To square. Because if that bishop moves away, then the rook will go to c8, and that is a checkmate since the pawn controls b7 and the rook gives check, right? So in this case, how can you exploit the pin? Well, you attack the bishop. B4, and now black cannot move the bishop away because if they do, they'll get checkmated. So this way, white will have won the bishop and will probably most likely win the game as well. All right, another position. Uh, this is an interesting one because where is the pin happening here? It's for black, right? So what is black pinning? 
And the idea is that if that knight was not here, black could simply go to h2 and give checkmate, right? Because the queen would be supported by the bishop on e5. So the knight is pinned to the pawn on h2. Well, since the knight is pinned and cannot go anywhere, it's in a very vulnerable position, and therefore black, in order to exploit the pin, will simply move h4, attacking the knight. If the knight goes away, boom, checkmate. If the knight doesn't go away, then you simply win a piece, right? Uh, all right. You do have to be careful, however, when it comes to exploiting the pin. So here you already have the knight that is pinned. Awesome. We already know what we have to do. We have to add more pressure to the knight. So use the queen and attack it a second time. But careful though, because here you have so many options, right? You can go with a queen to b5, queen to b4, queen to a3, a d4, e5, b6. There's a bunch of options. Or c1 or c3. I think those are, are those all the options? Yes. Yeah. Okay. But you got to be careful because sometimes black will have a way to defend, like counterattack and save his or her pieces. So for example, if the queen goes to b4, which is a very natural move to, to play, black can actually move the knight away like this. Why does this work? Because like if you capture your rook now, you will be losing the queen. So it's a it's a way to counterattack, right? So you gotta move this queen, but to square where the knight won't be able to like attack the queen, right? So you can go to b5. Because now if the knight moves away, then the rook is hanging. And um, for example, if you go to d4, which looks pretty natural, like looks good. Again, black has a counterattack, and then they can move the knight to either e6 or b3. And again, it happens the knight is moving away, winning time, right? Because they will be attacking the queen. So you have to move the queen away. But then when you move the queen away, then black already solved the problem of the knight that they can simply either move the rook away or exchange rooks. Mm. Oh, of course, in this position here, you're not going to attack the knight a second time putting the queen in front of the rook, right? It does not make sense since you wouldn't really capture the knight with the queen in the first place, right? Um, here you have a uh, position where black is pinning the knight. And uh, if you're white, how can you get out of the pin and still defend your rook? Well, you're going to move knight to e2, right? Because now the knight defends the white rook, and if black captures, well, you simply capture back, and you're good to go. So here, as black, what what should you do? This, if you go down to f3, which looks pretty much OK, since you're just adding more pressure to the knight, that is actually wrong, because again, the knight can simply go to e2 and defend the rook to g1. So the correct move here would be rook g7. That's a battery, right? You're, you are attacking the knight twice. And even if the knight goes to e2, now you still have two pieces attacking your rook, right? So both of your rooks. And then you're going to capture twice on g1 and win a knight in the end. Um, all right. So another very interesting position. It's it's black to play, right? And before you look for the, the correct move, we always have to understand what's going on in the position, right? So you have a pass point here, and white is pretty much already winning, right? They have a so what am I saying? Sorry, it's Friday, it's it's Friday evening, already taught three hours in a school with a bunch of kids and a bit tired. But yeah, you know, white is already losing. They're down a queen, basically. It's a very complicated position, but still. Black has to convert advantage, right? So what I see here is that Black has uh, Rook on C8 putting pressure in C1, although they're not really going to capture there since the knight is not hanging. But I think probably the most important thing to see, to notice in this position, is that the queen is pinning the rook. So that means that that rook is frozen. And how can you take advantage from this? From this, from that? <laughs> rook C2. Now you add more pressure on the rook, and what can, what can white do? 
I mean, if they move the king, hello, that's checkmate. They cannot move the knight and defend the rook. They cannot defend the rook with the bishop. So it's it's pretty much, yeah, it's checkmate in one move now, regardless of what white plays. So this is a very interesting way. You Again, there is a pinned piece. You simply add more pressure to it. Um, you could also have gone to b8, but to b8, there is a problem. Like the idea again is perfect, it's correct. But if you go to b8, what happens is that white can simply block your rook by putting the knight on b3. So in the end, the correct move here is rook c2. And last but not least, um, it's white to play here and there's checkmate in two moves. But before you look for the correct move, Try to understand what's going on in the position. Look for patterns. So hanging pieces. What is hanging here? Um, well, only the knight is hanging. Okay, can you give check in one move? Yeah, you can with the queen or with the bishop, but I think both of them are not good moves since you're just losing pieces. Um, but as we saw, the pawn on g7 is pinned. Now, if that pawn is pinned, it's not defending h6. So the correct move here is to simply go to h6 with your queen. And now you're simply threatening g7 twice with queen and bishop. And there's nothing black can do here to stop the checkmate. So regardless of what black will do here, there is queen g7 on white's next move in checkmate. I think that was it. Uh, oh, actually, no, this is not it. But I'll leave you this one for you solve as your um, homework. It seems that it's like actually a very nice puzzle. It seems like white is lost, right? The queen is pinned. Indeed it is. There's like this beautiful battery here, very powerful on the second rank. And um, so things are looking pretty bad for white. But there's one move that saves it all. So I'll leave you this, and uh, what am I saying? I'll leave you with this. Let me know if you can solve it. And that was it. If you have any questions, uh, probably don't ask me because I, how, how are you gonna ask me? I don't know. And I, I, I never know how to win a video. It really is like, I don't like to say goodbye guys and see you next time, but it's whatever. Have a nice Friday, Friday, yeah. Have a nice Friday and uh, wherever you are in the world, I hope you have a beautiful weekend with lots of sun and pasta. See ya. Bye-bye.